TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. Particularly with like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bell. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Don't forget, man, we are partnering with the Blueprint Mastermind, man. The link down in the description. This is the most recent roundtable talk. Uh, yeah. Any old videos y'all looking for? They're over here on my Facebook. This is the Facebook page. They'll be they'll be back soon though, next month on the YouTube. And if you you know, hang on, I ain't gonna do that. If you uh want to go outside the norm of what I post on YouTube, man, I got a bunch of stuff over here on uh Patreon. So come check it out, man. Link down in the description, man. Don't forget the Discord too. The invite link is in the description. Dang, I'll be telling y'all a lot. Dang, let me get to it. Can't pay, we'll take it away. Season 1, episode 3. Let's get into it, man. The number of calls to helplines from tenants struggling with rent arrears increased by 13% in the last 12 months. More than any other debt type. Many feel they won't be able to keep a roof over their heads, according to a new report. Consumer debt has more than trebled since 1993, reaching 158 billion in 2003. Trebled? Did that mean tripled? I don't know. I don't. Y'all be having words that it's the English language, but I don't. <laughs> Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are High Court Enforcement Officers. Commonly known as sheriffs, they spend their time chasing debts from those who can't pay. You're supposed to be invited in, not breaking. We have a warrant that allows us to break in. And those who won't pay. If you'd have done as we'd asked, this would have all been totally unnecessary. Working under the authority of the High Court, they are the officers people turn to when all other avenues have failed. Okay, you know they have are. the power to seize your possessions to cover your debts. Debt exists. I know exactly who they are every day. Y'all keep telling me. People that we meet are in denial. Payments. Don't be a problem. Most of the people that we meet are in denial. Denial on two fronts. One is that the debt exists. And the second and critical point is they don't think it will have gone this far. Paul and Steve are on their way to West London. Their work means meeting people in crisis and facing emotionally challenging cases as they enforce the law. Today's job is one of them. It's a tough job, man. Um, but somebody got to do it. You know, it's one of those jobs where, you know, tough job, but somebody got to do it. You feel me? I'm just waiting. Okay. You can have a sweetie. I can have a sweetie. I've got, I'm having a chewy at the moment. Oh, right. You're so ungrateful. They have a high court order to evict a couple who have become sitting tenants. How far is it? Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. The tenant's lease has run out. They haven't paid their rent in five months, and they've ignored all letters and court orders telling them to leave. The two-bedroom flat is in a nice area in Chiswick. The owner's son is waiting for them outside the property. He wants to witness the eviction. If the landlord is there... That's OD. Why do you... Like, you just... <laughs> I want to witness the eviction. That's like pressing buttons. That's adding insult to injury. He's, you're a target. Mm -hmm. It makes it contentious. That's fine. We're actually once removed from that, yep. so they can batter on about you to us. Okay. And it goes over there. Yeah, so, no worries. But that's only for the first five minutes. Okay. The landlords are a retired couple who rely on the rental income. They are owed over £10,000. The flat is actually held by my parents, who are, are retired. And sadly, that's meant that all their pension for the last four or five months has gone on paying the mortgage on this flat. They've worked all their life. So the last few months, they haven't had the money to spend on, on living that they would have had otherwise. So it, it's, it's been very bad news in that respect. I get it. I would have stood outside too, no cap. Y'all playing with my mom and dad, like, it's, it's tough at that point. <laughs> the block down that ends. While the tenants effectively stayed there rent free and to my mind squatted. 
The owner's son has also been told that the property is now not in a good condition. There have been complaints about bad smells from the neighbours. Paul and Steve's powers mean they can force their way in and make the tenants homeless immediately. Hello? We have a writ here to repossess the property. We'd rather you open the door and save the damage of us breaking in. How long has this been going on? Since June. OK. Was he there? There's no answer. Nobody. Would you like to open the door, please? Obviously not. That one's locked. The warrants that we carry are quite powerful. So in other words, if people want to talk through the letterbox, we allow that to happen until we get bored, and then we'll just break the door down. We'll do our best. Sir, would you like to open the door so we can talk about it? Can you just talk this through the door? Please read it fully. People become face to face with a debt situation when a High Court enforcement officer knocks on the door. Uh, until that time, they can just dismiss it. They can shred the letters, ignore the telephone calls, or pretend that it doesn't exist. And I'm almost positive this still happens, right? Like, this didn't stop just because the show stopped. Like, no, no, no. High force, high court enforcement debt, whatever officers, they still knocking at that door. Especially in times like this, with inflation, it's tough. Sure? Well, the best thing for you to do is, if you open the door, we can actually talk to you instead of uh, trying to do this through the door, and we can work our way around the system. If you feel that. Um, you feel that it's not correct and you'd like to call the police, feel free to do so. Either way, sir, we can enter the property with or without your permission, but we'd rather do it with your permission. Will you open the door, sir? When somebody does this to the, a property that's not theirs, Well, never mind. I would even if I was paying rent, I would still do this. This is kind of crazy to have on your door. People just walk by and see your whole meat hanging out, possibly like, like you know. What I'm saying? Thank you very much. You understand the position of the writ? Not really. Huh? Not really. No. Right. What happens is, what it says, it says that, you know, owing to, owing to the landlord has taken you to court. It's now gone through the High Courts, and now, today, we've come to issue this and repossess the property. Well, we have nowhere to go. But this has been going on for some time. I mean, this isn't the first you've heard of it today, is it? No, we've been trying to, to get fine somewhere. But won't the council re you? They're trying to do it. They're trying to serve it, but they said we're not high priority. Well, you, you are, are today. now, yeah. Today you are a high priority because you're now homeless. Damn. He tried to say that as nicely as possible, but it, didn't, it was not that nice. <clears throat> You've got a total care in the community issue here. You know, there's notices on all the doors saying, please close the door quietly, keep this door locked at all times, switch off, do this, do that. And the bloke is obviously not 100%. So we've suggested that he ring the council to get the, the system rolling, and then we'll, we'll deal with it. The tenant's vulnerable condition is a real surprise to everyone. Paul and Steve now face a dilemma. They are worried about the tenants, who currently have nowhere to go. But they also have to carry out the eviction, as commanded by the court order. They have to make a decision. Ain't no decision. 
You gotta do what you came for, right? Ain't no decision. Across the UK, official figures reveal that there were 300,000 mortgages in arrears and almost 34,000 homes repossessed in 2012. This marks a 60% increase since 2006. 60% is crazy. Rent areas are becoming fastest growing debt problem in the UK. Today, Paul... I want to know these numbers now. Anybody can copy and paste or find the numbers of what's happening now. And Steve are in Chiswick, West London, on an emotionally challenging case. Hello? They have a writ to evict a couple who owe £10,000 in rent. Their lease has run out. They haven't paid their rent in five months. We've come to repossess the property, sir. And they have ignored all letters and court orders telling them to leave. £2,000 a month is Will you open the what door, I sir? pay. But they are clearly vulnerable. Thank you very much. <laughs> We've got a total care in the community issue here. So we've suggested that we ring the council to get the system rolling, and then we'll, we'll deal with it. Paul and Steve are legally compelled to carry out the writ. You can't stay in the flat anymore no, from tonight. I okay. Tonight? Yeah. Where yeah. do we go? Well, that's why we're trying to get, the, get, the get you to, to get us. in touch with the council to give you at least temporary accommodation. Well, how can, can we get our things together yes. to, to get out? You well, know? Can we, okay. will we have time? No. Oh, I'm asthmatic, my husband's disabled. Yes. yes, I understand. Is there anything we can do? Unfortunately... Well, where do we go? Well, just, just, just li listen to me a second. Sorry, I'm well, no, that's OK. Sick. No, just, just relax. What we can do is uh, you get enough stuff together for two or three days. Yeah. Well, where would they put us, do you think? I, do, uh, they, no I disrespect. Mean, no, no. I don't know. With the tenants about to be homeless, Paul asked the landlord and his solicitor to ring the local council as quickly as possible. We'll allow them to take enough kit with them today for 48 hours, or, you know, whatever, yeah. so that the council can sort them out, or yeah. not as the case may be, and then we'll arrange collectively, you come back, let them back in, yeah. to actually arrange for the for removal the of the goods. Taken. If they try to break back in there, it's a criminal offence and they can be arrested. In my view, it's a council responsibility. If they're in need of care, and they, from our opinion so far, they obviously are. Mm -hmm. These people should be prioritised. But it won't kick up on the priority list until the bailiff's there and evicting them. Mm -hmm. While the tenants face an uncertain future, the owner's son... This is a kind of crazy little case right here. This is only the third episode we ended this, but, like... Like... Disabled, asthmatic. At what point, though, did you realize that you wasn't about to be able to pay this rent? Like, so the ball should have been rolling. You know what I'm saying? He's more worried about the state of his parents' flat. You know, it's, it's, you've seen the state of it as it is in there. It smells of fish. Have you been in the lounge yet? No. Don't. Almost two hours later, the council has found them temporary accommodation, but the tenants are still in the flat. The owner's son and his solicitor are beginning to lose patience. Steve, they're taking the piss now. We'd love to wrap, wrap it up. I mean, it, we're, we're giving them over. Uh, two lot, hours. Lot longer, you know, uh, fair, 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 fair. We're, we're, we're all the families to go okay. to as well. Well, I'm sure, thank you. I've been told now that I have to draw this to an end because everything's taken so long. Very well, we have No, no, we've given them ages. It's six o'clock now. You need to get your stuff together, ready to come out the door. Yes, sir. We can't really hang about outside in the cold, is it? Oh, you can always go and sit at McDonald's. It's quite warm. Dang. Ooh. The council has came, found temporary housing, though, so why don't you just go to the temporary housing? I'm lost. Bro said so you can't really just sit in the cold like, oh, well, we'll go to McDonald's. That, that was brutal. They're making no attempt now. You've been very helpful. What you, what you need to do is you need to get your suitcase or where are they going to take your clothes in? We haven't got suitcases. We can't find together. suitcases. We never had time to get them out. There are no suitcases. They didn't have time to pack suitcases. That's everything now. Okay, that's us done. Thanks very much. 
I'm sorry for the delay and the amount of time right. it took. No um, right, how are you doing? Thanks. The tenants have a roof over their heads tonight, but their home is gone. The owner's son is eager to see what's happened to his parents' flat. Until I go in, so I haven't been in there for months. I really don't know what's... Get a mask on, buddy. I'm going to be faced with. This flat, when they took it on, was pristine. Great, so this is what we're left with. They clearly got something going else going on. They're hoarders as well. This is hoarding. Like Well, just give up, don't you? What hell it is now. It was really clear that the people had a huge problem. They were just like, you know, absolute hoarders. Yeah. And the, the flat was five feet deep in waste paper, rubbish, and collected items. It's a brand new sofa somewhere under that lot. And the rent arrears is probably around about 10 grand. Then you've got legal fees, so that's probably about another three and a half thousand. And then sadly, because they have left the place in such a bad state, adds up to over double the arrears. So there's another 20 odd thousand pounds. Cut it out, bro. Now you're bugging. It was not 10 bands to fix this hut. Paint, clean paint, new carpet. Y'all trying to fully furnish it for the next people that move in? Doubt it. Not gonna make that mistake twice, right? Oh. I think this is what estate agents would describe as in need of tender, loving care. <coughs> and in the bedroom, which was the most shocking of all, there were two beds, but there were cardboard box constructions on the bed, and for whatever reason, they actually slept inside the cardboard boxes. So it was really sad. Well, at least we got it back. Council needs to sort them out and get them some kind of help up here or something. I don't know. If the last job was challenging, their next job is going to be no easier, but for very different reasons. Today, Paul and Steve are on their way to Romford for a debt of over £3,000. Their high court powers mean that if the debtor can't pay, they have the authority to seize any possessions and sell them to cover the debt. Oh, one of these, huh? You can run a point on this one, Steve. Can y'all hear me? The man named on the writ works as a taxi driver. Hi there. Looking for Mr. Ali Zidal. If he can't pay the £3,000, they could take his car away. Hi there. Hi. Sorry to wake you up. Mr. Eliza yeah. has taken you to court. Uh, yeah. What for? Uh, I have no idea what for. I don't get that information. All I know is that there is a warrant outstanding and the amount is £3,253.4p and and plus a £440. It's not me. They made a mistake. It's not me. They, they sent to the court also. That's not me. There's a different person. Who is it? This is my brother. No, I'm not responsible for my brother. You should go and get them, not me. You're sheriff. I'm a sheriff, yeah. I'm a sheriff, Aliza. Then. Well, my, this, if you need an ID, I bring an ID for you. Okay, but, yeah, but look, you see? Mr. Ali Zadar claims that the debt is his brother's, but the writ is made out in his name. I didn't pay that rent for that house, which is it wasn't me, it's a different person, if he's my brother. So where is Mr. whoever it is? Ask them, not me. He's your brother? Yeah, he's my brother. So you must know where he is. <laughs> yeah, I know. You should find him and go and tell them. Why is he... Well, okay, can I just be... This is looking like a lie. 
You know what's about to happen, buddy? Your car is gone. Very simple about this. Just really, really simple. Is this your vehicle? Yeah, he is. Okay. This is from the courts. Yeah. The highest court in the land that empowers me to take your car, unless you can pay this debt. Paul and Steve have no idea whether he is telling the truth or not. A high court writ is rarely wrong. The way to get to the truth is just to keep talking. And all the time you're talking, you're asking the same questions in different ways, but you're looking for an inconsistency in the answer. So it's straightforward interrogation. I spoke with him. He was my landlord. I was living in this address as well. Before that guy, I was living on that address. And that's why he knows my address. He sent it to me. He bring, I showed him why you take it, put it my name to the court. Where is your brother? My brother. It's my brother, he's in this country. Go and get him. Well, we don't no. need to, because we're here inside the car. That's an amazing location that you just gave him. <laughs> he said, he in this country. Oh, Fine, well. you can take it in my car. Okay, can you give the keys? Huh? Give this keys. I'm not going to give the key. Why should we give the key? Can you get your brother on the phone then? I'm not going to put him on the phone. Well, that's okay. We'll just take the car. I'll call a recovery truck. Look, would you, listen, there's an easy way of doing it or there's a hard way. No, it's not a hard way. If it, I'm not responsible Unless for that. Unless you prove to us that this is not you. Have you got the logbook for that vehicle out there? Yeah, of course I've got Let's a logbook. It, but before Paul calls the tow truck, he rings his office to check out the man's story and whether the writ is correct. And the truth is surprising. Bye. They have the wrong man. Right, he's obviously, covering, he's obviously covering for his brother. His brother is a completely different person. None of this paperwork applies to... He explained to us that it wasn't him and it, it was his brother. But if your name is on that... I want to issue an apology on the behalf of me and whoever else in the community of us thought that it was he was lying. It just, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If you can't pay, we take it away. And we hear this all the time. My bad, Brody. Salute for holding your brother down. My fault. <laughs> it just wasn't convincing. That writ, you are then liable for what it says. All the taxi licenses, all of that paperwork shows that this warrant, the name on this warrant, is against this man. But in the meantime, since we've actually come and knocked on the door, we've had an email that says the name on the warrant is wrong. It's now up to Mr. Ali Zadar, not the court, to prove his innocence. <coughs> He's currently legally liable for the debt. But Paul and Steve have a plan to soften the blow. I'm going to seize that car outside, but leave it with you. I will write paperwork that shows that the, the sheriff's office yeah. Now owns the taxi. Yeah. Yes. You then carry on using it while I sort the paperwork out. That if the mistake is not as you say it is, but you're a reasonable man, I can come back and take it. the taxi. Just so long as you understand that. Yeah, yeah. I and understand. if you do, if you don't produce it when I ask you to, it will be reported as stolen. Mr. Alizadar now has two weeks to challenge the writ in court, or risk not just losing the vehicle. Just go challenge it, as simple as that. <laughs> also, his livelihood. He has a family and three children to support. There's obviously a mistake, or sorry, potentially a mistake, but we, I'm happy with what I've done because I can still come back not smiling if it goes wrong. Yeah. Right, in the meantime, if you want to save all this aggravation, ring your brother and get him to call me. More than eight. I apologized. Y'all not gonna sit in this comments and make me feel bad and sit in front of y'all TV, eat y'all popcorn and make me feel bad about calling dude a liar. Shout out to the first responders too, man. Thank y'all for hitting the like button, man. I appreciate it, man. All the likes, the comments, even if they say Benordum, they push the... <laughs> They push it. <laughs> million households now have no savings at all. And almost half of the lowest income households are spending more than 25% of their income on debt repayments. 
Oh my god, y'all gonna like the vlog I did this week. Y'all gonna like it, man. Y'all gonna like it. I did something that I told y'all I would not ever do. Y'all gonna like it. All I'm gonna say is Surty Driver. Steve Wood is a Bristol bailiff with over 20 years' experience. Who is this? His firm specialises in carrying out court orders and repossessions on commercial properties. A busy week can see as many as 50 writs executed. I'd be inclined to say this is a fictitious name. I've been assorted, I've, I've been knifed, things thrown at us, oil, petrol. We've had people swing at us with pickaxes. We have heard it all before, and I'm sure we'll hear it all again. Good morning, Evelyn Somerset Police. How may I help? Hi, good morning. My name is Steve Wood. I'm a bailiff based here in Bristol. Yes. Um, it's just for information purposes. We're about Today, Steve is repossessing a small convenience store, a classic corner shop. But the tenant... They repossessing corner stores? <laughs> uh, no wonder Five Pound Munch stopped being filmed. They took all y'all, they repossessed the hood stores, didn't they? It owes over £5,000 in rent. Yeah. OK, all right, no worries. Thank Thanks. Thanks for again. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. It's 6.30 in the morning, and Steve wants to get there early before the tenant opens up. The shop lies in the usually peaceful suburb of Clifton. Steve doesn't have the keys, but as long as the tenant is not inside the property, the court order gives them the right to break in. But getting in isn't straightforward. They've discovered there's a steel bar reinforcing the doors. While the locksmith cuts through the steel, the tenant arrives. Are you with the shop, sir? Yeah. Uh, we're bailiffs, we're repossessing it on behalf of the landlord for non paid rent. Um, well, that's what you're going to have to discuss with the landlord. Steve's first task is to get the keys and gain entry before the tenant crosses the threshold. If you encounter anybody um, before you get in and that person's inside the premises, in, you cannot go forward. Whereas if you've got into the... I feel like y'all just giving free game at this point. Y'all paying attention? Hold on, let me rewind for y'all. If this ever happened to y'all, pay attention. If you encounter anybody um, before you get in and that person's inside the premises, in, you cannot go forward. Whereas if you've got into the premises and you're over that threshold and then somebody turns up afterwards, um, then you're okay, you're in the premises. Yeah, I got it. It's like a vampire. Vampire can't cross the threshold unless you let him in. <laughs> My bad. So, have you got the keys that could let us in? Yeah. All right. Could I have the keys, please, sir? Uh, how much is it? Richard? Richard. They're in. I don't know. Uh, it's about five and a half thousand, as far as I'm aware, maybe a bit more, but at the moment we're repossessing it for non payment of rent. My colleagues repossessed it. All right, we're changing all the locks. Yeah. Um, we'll... So you take the stock code now? No, no, stock is for, you, you can take the stock out, yeah. but I'll give you my business card yeah. and we can arrange for you to take the stock out. Well, you haven't paid your rent, have you? Steve's writ only allows him right. to take possession of the property. He's not authorised to seize the stock inside or take payment. Okay. Uh, so what I can I do with the payment? Yeah. Well, you need to talk to the landlord. I would immediately phone the landlord and start to talk to How him. How much is the total? Um, well, I, let me get the warrant. Come in and have a look. We'll have a look. Well, according to this, it's £5,802.46. So I, if I pay this amount to whom? To the landlord. Then you have to open the... I can't say yes or no. All, all I can say is, ring the landlord or ring his agent, and if they... So it sounds like dude got the money. Like, why wasn't you paying him? You was just trying to finesse until you could build up or something? Like, what was going on here? They agree, then we'll let you have the keys back once you've paid the rent arrears and our costs. We're changing the locks, okay. front and back. Okay. If you try to gain entry after we've left, it will be a criminal offence. Okay. All right? Okay. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Despite being owed over £5,000, the landlord at least has his shop back. But once inside, 
Steve discovers the situation is even worse. The back of the shop has been converted into living accommodation. None of this has been authorised. It's all put in illegally. And there's a sort of shower unit in here. It's, it's just disgusting. It really is. We normally find that some of the property's been converted if it's upstairs and complete. HMP corner store is tough. Be separate, but actually chopping the shop in half, and he hasn't even, you know, it's just amateurishly done. Chopping the shop in half and just putting a, a full stud wall in, and then um, turning it into living accommodation. It's just wrong. Doing all this and not paying rent, like, should have paid rent so you could have stayed off the radar. It's just wrong. I mean, it's going to take thousands. Allegedly. Of horrible there was definitely three possibly four living there it's sad but it's not unheard of and it shouldn't happen in today's age but it does while steve doesn't know who is living there the conditions are a real concern just a load of junk there's a, there's a side entrance here which has been pad locked up and it's just a load of junk really it's Gee whiz, look at these electrics. Why the hell this place hasn't gone up in smoke, God only knows. It wasn't the cleanest of shops that we went into. Um, the fridges were dirty. There wasn't that much stock on the, the walls and some of the stuff that was there was out of date. There were rat droppings behind the, the counter. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be doing my Traffic shopping in there. It's a bit, bit of a mouldy sponge, I'm not sure what the hell that's it. It's pain though. Back, open at 12, back in 10, back in three minutes. So he's obviously here. Has he got one for not back at all? <laughs> Close. The shop repairs will cost the landlord thousands of pounds, and the tenant's business has been ruined by the debt. Do I feel any sympathy for them? Not, not really. I mean, it sounds a bit harsh, but if he offered to pay the rent this morning, um, then why hasn't he paid it in the past? in the past That's what I said. two or three months. Why has he messed the landlord around for that length of time? So I think he's brought it on himself. For sure. At a certain point, you're just playing games, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Today, landlord Mark Tolbert has arranged for the tenants to come back and clear their possessions from his retired parents' flat. The tenants had refused to leave and owed £10,000. Unbelievable. Although the tenants were vulnerable, Mark has discovered that they were fully aware of their debt and the notices to leave. They even like to keep track of how much rent they're in arrears on their calendar. And when they got various letters from the lawyers, oh look, it's got the county court judgment there in August. Clearly they can't claim they didn't know what was going on. And I'll just try and open that window to get a bit more fresh air in to let the stench out, if I can. Be careful. Oh, dear, oh dear. Heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. Finally, the tenants arrived. My bad, hold on. I know a lot of y'all get so upset when I check a text message. Whole time, y'all don't realize that I'm taking care of my daughter and doing this at the same time. My daughter's in the room back there. She go to sleep, I come out here, do videos until I'm dead tired. Then I wake up at 6 a.m., take her to school. I ain't even gonna explain it, man. Appreciate y'all who do understand, man. Hold on, my bad. Come on, real quick. Well, we can start getting stuff downstairs, can't you? I mean, I don't mind helping. Oh, you yes, of course I will. I, I just want everything out, don't I? So I would politely suggest that we try and chuck as many clothes into black sacks a bit quick as possible, wouldn't you? And then, and then, then at least by the time the man in the van comes, we'll have done something for him to put in the van, won't we? He going above and beyond. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I'd be, like, icked out. You know how that ick 
my ick. Uh-uh, I couldn't do. I can't touch other people's like, like. I can't touch other people's filth. Me personally, and there's nothing wrong with saying that. If somebody's like, I don't like to clean up after other people. You get what I'm saying? Except my daughter. That's the only person. Like other than that, like I, nah, man, no. <laughs> It's really called a man in a van? I thought he was like, like the man. Right. Everything in there rubbish, agreed? Yeah. You're gonna sign to that effect, yeah? yeah. With the tenants and their possessions gone, Mark inspects the flat. This is brand new carpet, two and a half years ago. Flat. This is brand new carpet, two and a half years ago. The carpet three years old, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's okay. You gonna have to if you plan to I know in the state of Illinois, if you plan to rent out, even if somebody's only been there six months, you got to redo the carpet. And if you don't, the rent the whoever's renting it can complain that you gotta come do it anyway. This is because they let absolutely no air into the flat whatsoever during Whoa. the time they were here. Newly decorated before they came in. On a positive note, it looks somewhat better than it did about four hours ago. Mark and his parents can now start the process of getting the flat refurbished. people across the UK are living with serious debt problems. Two weeks ago, High Court Enforcement Officers Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner were in Romford to see taxi driver Mr Ali Zadar. That's not me, that's a different person. He had to pay £3,000 or risk losing his car. My paperwork allows me, under this name, to seize your vehicle. But it was a case of mistaken identity. The writ should have been in his brother's name. And even though Mr. Alizadar is the innocent party, it was up to him to clear his name in court. Ring your brother and get him to call me. Now they are returning to Romford. The debt has risen by a further 700 pounds and Mr. Alizadar hasn't been to court. So while Paul and Steve know he's the wrong man, the writ commands them to collect on the debt. The bloke has not uh, made an arrangement. And he had all the opportunity in the world. It is what it is, but To pay yet. So we're going to go back and give him the bad news that we're expecting him to pay. It's £3,915 today. I'm going to lead on it to you. The last time he thinks you're Mr Nice Guy. Hi, Hi how are you? I'm OK, how are you? Very well, thank you. Um, we still have a problem. We haven't heard from anybody with regards to this. So the situation they grew up here? is now that because your name is on all our paperwork, yeah. we are coming to you for this. Because this has come from the High Court, mm -hmm. the, the writ has been done, it's in your name, yeah, it and my name. you're responsible for it as far as the High Court is concerned. The last thing I want to do, or sorry, we want to do, is to take your car away. Because it's a nuisance to us, it's a nuisance to you, and it might all go wrong. Listen, in real, real terms, how much money could you get now? The money, I can get two, three hundred pounds. No, no, we're looking for two thousand pounds yeah, at least. I can give you two, three hundred.
I gotta be tweaking. I don't know what the. Was that the headphones? 300 pound. No, no, we're looking for 2,000 pounds yeah, at least. I can give you two, 300 pounds. With the deadline up and Mr. Alizadar unable to pay the debt, Paul is duty bound to enforce the warrant. The sheriffs have to seize the taxi. I'm only concerned this warrant's telling me what to do and I'm, I'm actually going to do what the warrant tells me to do. That's fine. You want to the car? Let him bring the key and take my yeah. stuff from there. If I was in this gentleman's shoes, I'd have been on the phone to my brother and asked him, what have you done? What's the situation? Why have you got these people knocking on my door? But he seemed to be reluctant to do that. I don't know why. It also means that Mr. Alizadar will be without his family transport and out of work. I'm sorry to have to do this. That's fine, that's fine. It isn't fine, and I feel just as bad about it, but, you yeah, know. You gave me a chance last time. I did. Which is, uh, we thought he's finished. Yeah. You're not, you're not gonna come back. It's cost £444 for our attendance today to remove it. Why would you not just go to court and fix it? You gave us chance last time. We thought you, we thought we, we thought you were bluffing, <laughs> and you wasn't. So it's, it's just cost him another four hundred and fifty pounds, if you like, plus whatever the other costs are on it. So the the debt started off at two thousand four hundred. It's nigh on four thousand now. This is where it goes out of control. And the easiest way to resolve this is to get the money. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way, and fight about it afterwards. Because every day that we've got this car, you're losing your wages. Thank All right, sir. You. You is there anything? Big, is there anything? Tea, coffee, cold drink. No, sir. We're okay, thank you. <laughs> we're okay. What a polite guy. He's a really nice guy, though. I mean, you take the man's car away, and he's living away, and he invites you in for coffee. Take care, sir. Okay, thank if, you. If we can get this solved in a few days. We'll bring you back. I hope he's... Thank you. All right. I hope that we're going to sort Okay. Thanks very much. Bye bye. I haven't got no car. I lost my job. To take my kids to the school in the morning and also my work. Now, Mr. Alizadar has two weeks either to pay the money or get the rip changed. If he doesn't, his taxi will be sold. I don't feel bad for that dude. He was a nice dude, you know. I thought you lied. You didn't lie. All you had to do was go to court. You had two weeks to go. You didn't? You played game. You thought you lied. Last year, over one million working households claimed housing benefits. Oh, no. High Court Enforcement Officers Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are seeing more and more cases of people on housing benefit who are in rent arrears and in trouble. Today's case is to repossess a house in Harrow. What I can't believe on these is that the rent arrears could just escalate, don't they? How do they allow it to get this far? According to their writ, the landlord is owed £10,000 by a female tenant. Well, we don't know anything about it, though, do we? Nothing at all. Do we need to, though? Well, no, I suppose If we not. know the whole story, we'll get all emotional about it. We'll be in tears <laughs> sitting on the side of the road. Oh, I don't want to do this job. Well, Please don't cry, you'll start me off. Left all my coins and everything in me. That don't make a lot of noise, does it? With no answer, their high court powers enable them to break in. Hello? What did he just wiggle in there with? See, this is... He just put a... a, a, a Credit card on the side of there? Hello? Clear downstairs? Nobody downstairs. Hello? Nothing? No. 
That'd have sucked to come home and your locks are just changing. Let's have a look around. Steve and Paul investigate the house for clues to the tenant's situation. It soon becomes clear that she has a young child. We've got a photograph on there. We've got a lady who, um, I guess the nationality. I mean, the, the, the actual, the name sounds Portuguese, but the photographs there tell her own story. She's got one child who, on that picture, um, looks to be about two or three years old. We then walk in along here and we find in debt collection letters through here, more debt collection letters, different companies, more debt collection letters. Uh, Brent Sir, uh, customer services threatening to take back £2,500 in an overpayment of housing benefit. And then in amongst it, we've got a guide to bankruptcy. A woman on her own here, got children, seriously weighed down with the debt problem. If you read that'd be sad, man. A couple of mistakes you make along the way of adulthood can like ruin your whole whole, you know what I'm saying? Debt is the debt can lead to depression, man. Hey, listen, if you got kids, make sure you teach them about credit, about debt, about savings. And if you are in debt, who better to teach them? Don't keep your kids in the dark. I mean, I can't teach you how to raise your kids, but like, some parents like to not tell their kids what's going on. Man, I won't let my kid let see me struggle. Yo, no, let them see. Let them see, because sometimes that be bringing out the dog in your child. Like, to go get it in your child. Like, no, my mom, my daddy struggling. Like, I gotta go get it. Like, I gotta go, I gotta be something to get them out of there like that. Keep us at home, the people we feel sorriest for always are the children of the home. So they might be at school and they're going to come back and find that their home as it existed when they went. Now, not young, super young, I'm talking like 10, 11, 12. They got to know. <laughs> the school no longer exists. I'm sending a message which says, please call me, Paul Bowhill, Sheriff's Office. We'll insert the word urgent. We've gained access as commanded and taken back the property. Uh, we're now making the property secure and it's now under seizure to us. So nobody can gain access unless we authorise it. With the landlord now at the property, Paul finds out more about the background to the case. Yeah, she was in receipt of housing benefit for some time. Were you receiving that? I mean, did the rent just suddenly stop? Rent just stopped, stopped um, more or less, I don't know the exact date, more or less about six months ago. For how long has she been here? She'd been here about at least eight months. So the first two months, yeah, no problem. Then after she told me, she got uh, made redundant. And then from then, What no, did she no do, payments. do you know? Um, I think she's some sort of carer. Um, that's what was written initially on her paperwork. Okay. And how much is the rent? Uh, rent is 1500 a month. After six months without paying rent, the landlord felt compelled to evict his tenant. It was all right up until, well, up until they were paying rent. Um, and then, it, then they started getting a bit, not opening doors when I, knock on the door and they can easily tell they're inside because you can see the little kid through the window. That's why I gave him a chance. I go, I don't really want to chuck a little kid out in the street, um, which is not nice to do. And what's been going on is not really a nice proce procedure to get um, a little kid involved. And really, more or less today, they're going to be out in the street. But um, they've, they've had more than well enough notice and what the procedure would be if they don't pay or don't move. So they've kind of dug the own grave, really. Paul's writ empowers him not only to evict the tenant, but also to seize and sell any of her possessions in order to repay the debt. There's obviously not £10,000 worth of uh, removable items in the house. There's still no reply from the tenant. As the locks have now been changed, and as the tenant doesn't know yet that she's been evicted, Paul and Steve are concerned. <laughs> Ten years ago, she definitely gonna pull up with her child. Like, dang, that's tough. Now we like to wrap it up. Now we are mindful of the fact that she is a potentially a single mother uh, with a child. So we don't want to dispossess them on a cold night like this. If there are other things that we can do. Finally, the tenant rings. Hello, Paula. Is that Paula? Yeah. Paula, I'm, I'm a sheriff's officer. We've repossessed your house. Do you understand that? No. Uh, I've come my house now, but it's 
Oh, no, 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 Sarah. What's done is done. I'm letting you know. We already made that move. Yeah, but you missed the point. You cannot get back into your house because it's been repossessed. Because it's been taken over by order of the court. No. The letter. Where's the letter? Well, no, I'm sorry. No, I agree with you. That's why I'm trying to make it no, easy. No, no, no. Is no. it possible? Well, I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do about it. What you're doing is it possible? Is it possible? How is it? <laughs> He's standing in the reality of it. Impossible. Is it possible? Why? Hello? It's getting late. Paul and Steve are worried about where the tenant and her young son will spend the night. If children are involved in a repossession, we immediately go into a completely different mode to contact the council because where children are involved, the council have a duty of care to provide emergency accommodation. Two hours later, the tenant finally returns. She has left her young son in the care of relatives. Oh, I lost my job. The child is need too much money because he's eating, he's need uh, dress, everything. Now my expense for money all weeks is 45 pounds. Uh, I'm feel sick, I'm feel bad. Because I love my child. All days I have different letters for bills. It's difficult. You Sorry. As Paula has left her son with relatives, she isn't eligible for emergency council accommodation. It's a huge, huge problem. Wait, because she left her son with, with relatives? I don't know. I gotta go get him. Hold on now. And this is, you know, £1,500 a month rent. Where do people find that? The housing benefit system has now been capped. But we're at the sharp end, and the reality is that we do feel for it, because we're, we're, we're the people who see it. Now I, I come to my mum's house, but it's one bedroom and one uh, living room. My sister in my house is come to, she come to visit me. Now we sleep uh, seven people in one house. With Paula homeless, and without transport, the sheriffs decide to drive Paula and her sister to her mother's house. Well, that's nice. That's nice. These dudes got hearts because I like. I swear it could be somebody real heartless doing this and not really caring at all. She's good to go now. It's good to not be emotionless in this job. I, I'm pretty sure it helps to have emotions. So we've done the best we can. Bear in mind, we've now been here for like nearly 11 hours. While one family with a debt problem try and start again, there's some good news for Mr. Alizadar. One week ago, he watched Powerless as Paul and Steve repossessed his taxi. Bye bye. The taxi was taken to cover a £3,000 debt that Mr. Alizadar maintained was never his. With court costs, the debt grew to nearly £4,000. Right. It was very hard on that time. My taxi was everything for me and my, for my family, because we survived with that. I was out of job, no work, I earned nothing. Also, we have to pay for the solicitor as well. With all the pressure, it came at the same time. It was very hard. That's how it be every time, man. All of it, you feel like it's on top of you. But after going to a solicitor to get the writ against him cancelled, the sheriffs have now returned his taxi. You should did that in the first place. I ain't even gonna hold you, but, but I get it. Can y'all see this? Let me move, man, because I ain't gonna be reading this.
Yeah, I got it. Bankrupt. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notice, man. I'm gone.